Hello AP Calculus AB students, Mr. Record here for our final video for topic 2.7, talking about the derivatives of sine, cosine, natural log of x, e to the x. But we're going to round out this video by revisiting our good friend, the definition of the derivative. So we got more practice with the definition of derivative. So let's take a look and see what we're talking about here. What you'll see in your notes packet, hopefully, are the limit definitions from the derivatives from topic 2.2 and and there, there's really two different forms i suppose and i don't want to confuse you because you can call these a variety of things so i have like the general form versus the derivative at a point but i wanted you to to know that this general form has two features to it two different versions if you will and for the most part they're very similar it's just that one uses a delta x approach, one uses an h. We've talked about how those are really the same thing. We have different textbooks that use, um, you know, delta x. Sometimes textbooks will use h. The College Board typically adopts the h. But this version right here is slightly misnamed because technically, if you're dealing with a specific value of c, then I think this would be more like a derivative at a point. Okay, even though it's classified as a general derivative. The version that we see over here is no doubt a derivative that would be focusing on a specific place on a graph of f of x where we're trying to find the slope of the tangent line. All right, so I don't want to confuse you with the idea that there are these three different forms, but we have to have them pretty much well in hand and understood so that we can do some of these questions that you see here in example four. So let's take a look. <clears throat> the question says, evaluate each of the following by recognizing the function whose derivative the limit defines. And <clears throat> if you're a student of mine, we did some problems not too long ago that dealt with this, and we're just going to revisit this idea, but just take it up to a next level. And basically what we want to do is, first of all, as we read this first limit, as h approaches 0 of the sine of pi over 3 plus h minus radical 3 over 2 over h, we want to recognize which of these three limit definitions does this most look like? And we could probably rule out the first one for a couple of reasons. Well, we don't see delta x, and instead we see h. But the x value that we have here isn't a general x, but it's a specific x that we typically call c. So if we move to the potential of this matching the second one, I think we might be in business there. I think that's exactly what we're looking at, except I do have a typo and I wanted to point that out right now before we go any further, and I apologize for this, but that C right there is supposed to be an H in your notes. Otherwise, this limit doesn't really make a whole heck of a lot of sense, okay? So that's the one that we want this to match with, okay? So what I've got here is this expression right here. Let's go ahead and use a, a better tool. Let's highlight this. This is going to serve as that C plus H, which is pretty revealing because that means that our C has to be pi over 3. There's no denying that fact. We know when we're taking the derivative in part A. We just probably don't know what we're taking the derivative of. Well, if you remember what we talked about before, the piece that you highlight in yellow essentially acts as the variable X. Because we typically, when we work forward, we replace the x with either x plus h or c plus h in this case. And so that means that our function is everything else around that, which in this case means our function is the sine of x. Now, if you want to put this to the test, you can take a look at the last part of our limit definition up there, which is written correctly, the f of c. And you may notice that if we take the sine of our pi over 3, that indeed is the square root of 3 over 2, right? And if you're not sure, you can think about drawing your triangle. And you can realize that pi over 3 is a 60 degree angle, right? And if you use your basic ratios, we know that opposite the 30 degree angle would be a maybe a side of length one, 
opposite the 60 degree would be the square root of 3 and of course the hypotenuse would be twice the small leg and again the sine is opposite over hypotenuse or the square root of 3 over 2. So we know it's working. Now this is where you would typically stop when you did some of the problems that we talked about before but now that we know how to take the derivative and we know how to do it fairly quickly we know that this problem is just asking us to take f prime and evaluate it at pi over 3. That's all that we're doing in this problem. So we're going to take the derivative of the sine of x, which we should hopefully know is the cosine, positive cosine, and we're going to replace the x with pi over 3. And the cool thing about this is that you can still go back and look at the same picture and take the cosine of this angle, and you should get an answer of one half adjacent over hypotenuse. Let's take a look at one more of these, part b. Now we're going to evaluate what does the limit of x approaching e of the natural log of x minus 1 over x minus e equal. Well, I want you to note, just like part a, these limits would be very difficult to evaluate given what we know right now. Maybe later on things could change. But if we use only the idea of the, de the definition of the derivative, we can make these things a little bit more manageable. So again, we want to match this. Which one of these derivative or limit definitions does this most resemble? Well, I think we can rule out the first one because of the delta x is not being there. Let me kind of reset this guy in the middle, but correct my mistake again. Make sure we know that's an h. I don't foresee this looking a lot like the middle version because of the lack of the c plus h. So we only have one more left to look at. That's the definition of the derivative at a point. Knowing that this starts with an f of x, that's awful helpful because I'm pretty sure that f of x would probably be the natural log of x in this problem. Now we just have to figure out what's the value of c. Notice that there's c galores in this question three of them show up, two are very evident from our limit because of the e's that we see in these two positions. So our c is e. Now remember the value here one was what f of c became and so if you want to test that, if you want to check that, you can take f of one or I'm sorry not f of one but f of e f of e because our c value is e and take the natural log and replace the x with e and I hope that we remember a little bit about our logarithms and, and that the natural log of e is 1. So I think we have the right setup. Now all we have to do is finish this problem up by taking the derivative of f of x and evaluate that at e. Our f of x's derivative is 1 over x. Perhaps we remember that from a previous um, exposure previous video that we talked about and then I'm going to evaluate this where x is going to be equivalent to the e. I could write that a couple of ways. I could say 1 over x such that x is equal to e which is basically going to mean that we have 1 over e and that's about as much as we can do with it. 1 over e would be our final answer. I want to go ahead and divert your attention to one last little activity to test your memory over the things that we've seen in these last few videos. All right, hopefully you're ready to go. You've just completed your last video for topic 2.7 and the main focus was the derivative of these four transcendental functions that you see just over here to which side? Is it that side? No, it's this side, over here to this side. So what I'm going to do is I want you to read through the top left one. We're going to give you about a three second count. Think of the answer. Don't look at your notes. Challenge yourself. And we'll check by flipping the card over, the virtual flashcard. And that's really what we have here is a set of virtual flashcards. And I'd like to challenge you to see how many of them that you know at this early stage. And then, of course, you're always welcome to revisit this video. Watch it again by just going into the video folder through Schoology. You can also check it out on YouTube. And go to the end of this video and you can use or access or watch this basic demonstration of these flashcards as much as you want. So here we go. The derivative of the sine of x, folks. 
What is the derivative of the sine of x? The answer is cosine of x. Hopefully you got that one right. Let's move on to the derivative of cosine of x. Think about it. The answer is negative sine of x. A really good question there. Did you remember the negative sign? Let's jump down to the lower left. This is one that we always hope that you get correct very early on, but who knows? It's early. You got time to memorize it. Derivative of e to the x with respect to x. The answer is e to the x. Nice job. Let's look at one more, one more, the derivative of natural log of x. Derivative of natural log of x. Think about it for a moment. And the answer is 1 divided by x. How many did you get right? Hopefully all four. But if you're not there yet, you got a little bit of time to kind of get used to these. But I got a feeling before long, within maybe a day or two of just practicing these, these will be memorized and you'll probably never forget them for the rest of the year. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you at the next video.